What's up everyone, back for another vlog. And in today's vlog, I'm gonna be showing you guys the so-called shelfie beers that I'll be reviewing during the month of October. So last week I did a vlog and I talked about how I am going to continue the whole mix six pack theme uh, that I did in the month of August. I was thinking about different ideas and this is what I've decided. So starting in October, moving forward, I'm going to change the whole theme from mix six packs to shelfie beers. Now. Shelfie beers, what does that mean? Well, <clears throat> for me, shelfie beers mean that you can walk into your local bottle shop of choice and pick the beer off the shelf. Now, it might be a year-round release, it might be a seasonal release, heck, it might even be a limited release, but most of these beers, if you get uh, these breweries in your neck of the woods, if they distro to your area, you should be able to walk into your local bottle shop and grab any of these. Now, a couple of these you might have to grab in the first week or two that they arrive, but I don't think any of these were like beers that flew off the shelf. So I'm gonna try to keep it to some year-round uh, releases, some seasonal releases, and a couple limited releases. I'll keep them you know, few and far between because I don't, the whole point of shelving beers is beers that you can get that are readily available. So so it doesn't make sense from that, that aspect. So the other thing I'm going to do with the whole shelfie beers is that I am going to review them every Tuesday and Friday of each month. Now, depending on the month and how many Tuesdays and Fridays there, could be anywhere from eight to 10 beers I review a month. Now, the month of October 2019 has nine Tuesdays and Fridays. So in front of me, you see 10 different beers and that's because this guy knows math. Now, that's because I'm going to do nine reviews, but I'm, going, I'm also gonna do a, a comparison review and you can kind of tell the comparison review I'm gonna do. So again, going forward, gonna try to review these shelfy beers every single month, anywhere between eight to 10 of them. And uh, a couple days before the beginning of said month, I will post a video like this, let you guys know the beers I will be reviewing. So if you want to go and grab them um, at any time and, you know, drink along with my review or drink them and then watch my review or drink them after watching my review or not even watching my review and just drink them, you can, uh, you have some uh, uh, notice. Um, because a lot of times, uh, you know, I wish that I grabbed a beer when I'm watching someone's review. So I'm hoping that's kind of the, the case uh, with these. So uh, again, the Mix Six Pack theme month uh, in August was fantastic. So much great feedback. Just again, an awesome month. So I'm hoping that you guys enjoy uh, these shelfie beers because, you know, sometimes, and this even happens for me being a viewer of uh, Beer Tube. You know, when I watch people's reviews, uh, I like watching reviews of people who um, review, you know, hard to get, uh, brewery only, you know, have to wait in line type of uh, beers. I enjoy that because if I ever want to try that brewery, I kind of know what to grab and whatnot. Uh, but at the same time, I also want to just be able to grab the beer that I see someone review and just get it myself. So that's what these are kind of for. So anyway, uh, let's get right into the beers. You know, after three, seven, 20 minute intro, I don't know, I, this is gonna be a 75 minute long vlog. But anyway, uh, the first two beers I'm going to re uh, be reviewing is going to be one review. It's gonna be the first one of October and it's going to be a comparison review of Southern Tears Pumpkin and their Pumpkin Nitro. So this beer, Pumpkin Nitro, I've been wanting to try now uh, ever since I heard it was gonna be released back in the summer and I've been waiting for it to show up. And you guys know how pumpkin beers are, especially, especially Southern Tears like Pumpkin and uh, Warlock. They show up in you know late June, early July. And this one did not show up and I'm like, where is it? I see Pumpkin, uh, Warlock, I see Cold Press Pumpkin, I see Rum Barrel Age Pumpkin, where is it? Well, they actually released this in September. Who would have thunk it? A, a pumpkin beer being released around fall. I don't know. Uh, so this can, when I compare it to this bottle, this can will be two weeks old. Now, here's the issue between the comparison. This bottle, just under four months old. And that's the only issue I'll have with this comparison is that you know, the base pumpkin, when you drink it fresh, it has a nice spiciness to it from like the cinnamon allspice and you know, all the spices in it. You get more of like a pumpkin pie filling with a, a pretty big intense spiciness. But as this beer ages, and this is, goes back, you know, ever since I've been drinking this over the last 10 years, uh, this turns into more of like a, I feel like a, um, almost like a vanilla pumpkin cookie or something. You get a lot of the, the bread crust, you get a lot of vanilla, or at least I do. So this is gonna be four months old, this is two weeks old, so it's, there's gonna be a difference between the base beer, but pretty sure uh, this beer is just base pumpkin in a nitro can. So I thought that'd be a lot of fun to do a comparison. Also, one other note is that I have not re-reviewed any beer, or revisited any beer on my channel. So pumpkin will be the first re-review uh, of any beer on my channel. Now. The one caveat being that this is the 2019 vintage and I reviewed a 2018 vintage. So not the same beer, but the same beer. 
confusing everyone. I'm confusing myself. So that should be a lot of fun. This will be the first review. I wanted to, I'm going to do my 10 days of pumpkin at the end of October, but I really wanted to uh, do this one, you know, before that, because it is a new release and I wanted to drink it myself. And I thought this would be fun. So first beer will be Southern Tier Pumpkin and Pumpkin Nitro. The second beer will be from Founders. And this is the first Founders beer that I actually purchased probably this year. I might've bought one earlier this year. I can't remember the last beer I bought from Founders, but this is their Underground Mountain Brown. And I've heard a lot of good things about this one. Uh, a lot of people seem to really be digging this one. So I was like, you know, I'm gonna grab it. Underground Mountain Brown, I'm gonna grab it. Sounds really good to me. I wanna get into it. So we're gonna review that one and hopefully it's uh, quite delicious. So we'll see. Next one from Left Hand Brewing. It's their uh, white nush, uh, white white nushin. I don't know what a white nushin is, but it's a white Russian nitro. So Left Hand, they are the kings of nitro beers when it comes to craft breweries. And when I saw this one, I was like, I have to review it. I did review a beer from a local brewery in Rochester, uh, Swiftwater Brewing Company. They did a. Um, white Russian nitro uh, imperial style. It was like 11.7%. They had the whole big Lebowski theme, you know, the dude's favorite cocktail being a white Russian. So I thought if somebody's going to, and that was a good beer. It was somehow under, like it didn't seem like it was in a nitro can, but it just seemed like flat, so to speak. And I know that sounds stupid. It is a nitro, but it just, it just seemed, it was a good beer, good flavors. It's just like the mouthfeel and body kind of lost it for me, but it was still good. This one though, it's left hand. They know what they're doing with nitro beer. So I'm like, yeah, this should be delicious. I hope it's delicious. We'll see. But I'm really interested in giving this one a go. Uh, this will be the second left-hand uh, beer I review in like the last week by the time I review this one. So should be interested. I have their left-hand Oktoberfest coming up. The next beer is from Stone, and it is their Notorious P.O.G., play on Notorious B.I.G., uh, and it is a Fruit of Berliner Weiss that is brewed with passion fruit, orange, and guava. I've seen a lot of people really enjoy this one, especially in the summer. I know this is, you know, early fall by the time I review this one, but it's still, still like 75 degrees outside, so still should be enjoying this one as a fall crusher, I guess, a summer crusher for sure. And uh, yeah, I haven't, I haven't never tried this one. I've seen quite a few reviews and a lot of people really digging it, and you guys know I like my fruited uh, kettle sour, fruited Berliners and Goza, so this should be right in Right up my alley. I think I should. I think I should enjoy that one, but that's why I review it. The next one is from uh, New Holland, and it is their Dragon's Milk Reserve, their Maple Oak. I've seen quite a few of my untapped friends uh, try this one, and the prevailing thought seems to be that quite a bit of maple, but definitely thin and not one of the better uh, reserves. But at the same time, I love maple and I really like the base uh, Dragon's Milk. Now I will be honest: the Dragon's Milk Reserve series, a lot of hits and misses. And uh, the thing is. I hope this is a hit, but it seems like it seems like it's kind of like a good beer. That's the prevailing thought. As I'm uh, actually recording this video, I just saw Brad Allison over at Thirty First Brewery uh, throw up his review. I've not watched it, so I'll have to check that out. But yeah, I saw it. I was like, I, I gotta grab it, right? And again, this was just on the shelf. I mean, you know, again, it, these these are not probably gonna sell. You probably will see all of these on the shelf. Now, this one might be the only one that maybe sells out, but I highly doubt it. Uh, you should be able to get this one if you get uh, New Holland. Although their distro is weird, sometimes they don't get all the uh, <laughs> all their Dragon's Milk reserves to every single market so i don't know we'll see uh next is the one like year round beer in this lineup and well not one but it is the one that i wanted to review the most it's from dogfish head it's their 60 minute ipa listen if you're into craft beer you've probably had this one before um i've wanted to review 60 minute 90 minute 75 minute 120 minute the only issue i have with their 60 and 90 and even sometimes they're 75 but mostly 60 and 90 is i cannot find them relatively fresh usually most of the 60 and 90 minutes in my area are like three months old or even older uh this bottle is just under two months old so i'm actually happy about that which is crazy happy about a two-month-old ip not that i'm you know a snob when it comes to the, the freshness i'm just i can't believe that i can't find a 60 or 90 minute that's like a month old, five weeks old, six weeks old. No, it's so when I saw this, I was like, I'm gonna grab it, probably fresh. So I will uh, see it, which brings me to what do you guys think of? Do you guys get uh, dogfish head in, uh, I should say, dogfish at 60 and 90 minute fresh in your area? What's the freshest you've ever seen in your area? Now, I'd imagine if you're around Delaware or maybe, uh, you know, states close by one night, you probably see it a little fresher. But like, like I said, I think the freshest I've seen 60 or 90 minutes has been like six weeks old, and that was like a couple of years ago. So, Gonna review this one, couple months old, not the most ideal situation, but we're gonna give it a go and I can't wait to get into it. Definitely gonna re review 90, 75, and 120 uh, in the future, so this will be the first. Uh, next is from Bell's. I've been reviewing quite a few Bell's beers lately and this is their special double cream stout. This is the 2019 release. This is a seasonal, I believe they released this in August, yeah, around August, maybe early September. And, you know, story time, we're gonna have a couple story times here to make this even longer, but the story time with this one, this is one of the first like sweet, splat, uh, sweet uh, slash uh, cream styles that I've ever had in my life. I actually picked this up, I wanna say in Ohio back in early 2011. 
and I was like, man, special double cream stout. Again, I was a, quite, a, quite a novice when it came to craft beer. I you know, only had maybe, at that point, I was about a year, a little bit over a year into it, maybe had like 100 different beers at that time, maybe even less. And I remember seeing this and going, oh yeah, I saw this in the Sam Adams uh, cream stout, and I picked up both of them. I'm like, I really do enjoy this, uh, this style, whatever it is. And now this is a sweet stout. This is not a milk stout. So even though there's cream on the name, this is a sweet stout, no lactose in here. And again, I haven't had this in quite a, quite a few years, probably, man, well over five. So revisiting this one and trying it, I can't wait to get into it. And uh, this is, like I said, one of the first sweet stouts I enjoyed. And it's, I think it's only like 6%, 6 6.1, something like that. So it's a lower ABV stout, which I nowadays, unless it's adjunct or something, they just kind of hit me the wrong way. So hopefully that's still good to my palate. Anyway, next. Quick story time again. This is Saranac, and this is their Black Forest. This is a part of their Throwback Series 2019. So if you know me, you know that I got into uh, craft beer you know, back in late 2009, early 2010. And back then, there was only one place that, I, that was close by that I could buy like single uh, bottles. So I relied on like grocery stores and, and, and the local beverage shop here called Consumers Beverages. And they really just sold things by the six pack, you know, 12 packs cases. And Saranac and Sam Adams was kind of my go-to because you could always pick up their mixed packs. They were always relatively cheap. If you picked up a mixed 12 pack, it was anywhere between 12 to 15 bucks, depending on the sale price. And the good thing about Saranac and Sam Adams, they introduce you to a lot of different styles. So you could pick up their, um, their spring, summer, fall, and winter mixed packs. They had different variety packs. And you could try between all of those, maybe like, 20 or 30 different styles over the course of a year. And I've probably drank well over 100 combined different beers from Saranac and Sam Adams just because of the mix packs. And this was one of their year round releases that they would include, I believe in like the fall mix pack. This is a German Schwarz beer. And they actually stopped, uh, Stop producing this as a year-round offering like in 2014, 15, it was like four or five years ago. Uh, but they brought it back a couple times. I saw this on the shelf and I was like, man, Black Forest throwback series. I was like, I remember that beer. I, I actually enjoyed it. So I picked it up. Haven't reviewed anything from Saranac on the channel. So here we are. So hoping that one is uh, pretty good. I remember it being, for a German Schwarz beer, a, a pretty solid offering. So first Saranac review and it's going to be a beer that I used to enjoy and used to pick up all the time in the mix back. So cool stuff. Last but not least from Trogues, their Java Head Stout. Another coffee stout that that uh, I haven't had in quite a while, but I remember enjoying. Uh, one of the darker offerings from Trogues that I really dig. And uh, yeah, haven't had it in quite a while, so I thought I'd give it a go. So these are the 10 beers I'll be reviewing. Again, nine reviews. This will be a comparison review. And I think I have a pretty good a pretty good variety here. I mean, you're talking about a coffee stout, German Schwarz beer, a sweet stout, a uh, American IPA, a barrel-aged uh, maple beer, um, fruited sour, a nitro white stout, a uh, barrel-aged imperial brown ale coffee, and two pumpkin beers. I think it's a pretty good um, you know, variety. Uh, so yeah, th these will be posted, like I said, every single Tuesday and Friday throughout the month of October. Like I said, if you want to pick these one up, uh, pick all these up or just a few of them and uh, you know, drink along with me when I post the reviews, feel free to do so. These are in order of how I'm going to post them. So these, you know, in order. So you'll see Pumpkin and then all the rest. And then the last uh, review of October will be Trove's Java Head. So yeah, anyway, I appreciate everybody stopping by for another vlog. It is a longer vlog, but I want to kind of talk a little bit. I wanted to talk a little bit about these beers and like my history of the Saranac and the Bells and just, you know, just go a little bit in depth. Obviously, when I review them, I'll go more in depth. But yeah, I just, some of these brought back memories to, from my uh, earlier days in craft beer and just enjoying the, the beers themselves and just, you know, like doing this comparison, a new, new pumpkin beer. Like I, I just remember when they just released regular pumpkin. Now they got, you know, three, four different variants of it. They have Warlock, um, just crazy stuff. Also, uh, I believe they're releasing their Nitro Creme Brulee Stout uh, this year as well. I think that's the next beer in their Nitro series. So I'm going to be reviewing that because their first two, the Nitro S'mores and Nitro Chocolate Milkshake, pretty damn good. So again, I appreciate each and every one of you stopping by for another vlog. Uh, be on the lookout for all these reviews throughout the month of October. And uh, I guess I'll talk to you guys later. Cheers.